Now, you'll be pleased to know that multiplying and dividing fractions is easier than adding and subtracting them. So let's have a look at a bit of multiplying first of all, and then we'll do some dividing. So with multiplying, what you need to do is times your numbers on the top, and then you times your numbers on the bottom. So you times your tops, and then your bottoms. Okay, so on the top we've got 1 times 2, so that's 2. And on the bottom, 3 times 5, that's 15. So the answer is 2 fifteenths. Okay, now sometimes you'll be able to cancel down. And it's always easier to cancel down before you multiply your tops and your bottoms. And you can cancel down anything on the top with anything on the bottom. So here, 2 and 10, they're both even numbers. They both divide by 2. So 2 divided by 2 is 1, and 10 divided by 2 is 5. And then we've got 3 and 6. Well, they both divide by 3. So if we do that, 3 divided by 3 is 1. 6 divided by 3 is 2. And now we can times our tops and our bottoms. So 1 times 2 is 2, and 1 times 5 is 5, 2 fifths. Now the next thing you might be asked is when you've got a fraction of a number. So something like this, 5 eighths of 16. Well the of just means times. And now we use a little trick with this 16. We turn it into 16 over 1. And now we can times these as normal. We can do a bit of cancelling down. 8 and 16 both divide by 8. And now we times our tops. 5 times 2 is 10. And on the bottom, 1 times 1 is 1. So 10 over 1 is just 10. Another example like that. 3 fifths of 10. Well, that's 3 fifths times 10. Then we turn the 10 into 10 over 1. And then we cancel down. They both divide by 5. And then 3 times 2 is 6, 1 times 1 is 1, 6 over 1 is 6. So that's it on multiplying fractions. Now on to dividing fractions. So it's something like this, a third divided by a half. Well, I've got some good news for you. If you can multiply fractions, you can definitely divide fractions. You just need to follow two simple steps. So you need to turn the second fraction upside down, and then you multiply the two fractions. So with this example, the third, well that stays as it is, and the second fraction, instead of 1 over 2, we put 2 over 1. And then we times the two fractions. So if we times our tops, 2 times 1 is 2, and the bottoms, 3 times 1 is 3. So it's 2 thirds. Another example, first fraction stays as it is, 3 fifths. Second fraction, 9 over 10 becomes 10 over 9 and then we times them. We can do a bit of cancelling down here. 3 and 9 both divide by 3, and 5 and 10 both divide by 5. Now times our tops again. 1 times 2 is 2, times our bottoms. 1 times 3 is 3. Same answer as last time, 2 thirds. OK, now what about this? 5 eighths divided by 3. It looks as if it's simpler, but it can catch people out. And what we need to do is our old trick with this 3. We need to turn it into 3 over 1. So now we can carry on as normal. We turn the second fraction upside down, and we times them. 5 times 1 is 5. 8 times 3 is 24. 5 24 fourths. Now, the next thing you might come across is with mixed numbers. Whenever you get a mixed number, you need to turn it into a fraction. OK, so here, 4 and a sixth, that's a mixed number. So we need to turn that into something over 6. So how many sixths is it going to be? Well, 4 sixths are 24, plus 1 is 25. So that is equal to 25 six, And that's what we use instead. And now we can carry on as normal. Turn the second fraction upside down and times them. And now we can cancel down 6 and 4 because they're both even numbers. OK, so now if we times our tops, 25 times 2 is 50, and 3 times 3 is 9. So that is the answer, 50 over 9, but we could write that as a mixed number. And to do that, we divide top by bottom, 50 divided by 9. Well, 9 fives are 45, and we have 5 left over, so that's 5 remainder 5. So we put down our 5, and then the remainder goes over the number on the bottom of the fraction. So it's 5 and 5 ninths. Now, there are a couple of bits of theory you need to know as well. Unit fractions. These are fractions that have a 1 on the top. 
So unifractions are a good way to get one over on people. <laughs> So if you times by a unit fraction, that's exactly the same thing as dividing by what's on the bottom of the fraction. So times by a half is the same as dividing by two. Times by a third is the same as dividing by three. Times by a quarter is the same as dividing by four. OK, and that's it on unit fractions. Now for reciprocals. Now reciprocals are fractions that are upside down versions of each other. So two thirds would become three over two. And this is what we used when we were dividing fractions, when we flipped over the fractions. OK, another couple of examples. 5 sevenths, that is 7 over 5 as a reciprocal. And the reciprocal of 9 over 2 is 2 over 9. Now, if you times a fraction by its reciprocal, you always get an answer of 1. And that stands to reason, really, because you can always cancel down. So 2 and 2, they, they both divide by 2 to give 1. And 3 and 3, both divide by 3 oops, to give 1 not 3. And then you have 1 times 1 is 1, and 1 times 1 is 1. 1 divided by 1 is 1. So that's it on unit fractions and reciprocals. OK, let's just summarise what we've seen. First, we looked at multiplying fractions. What do we do? We cancel down, first of all, if we can. And then we times our tops by our tops and our bottoms by our bottoms. And remember, if it says of, that means times. Then we looked at dividing fractions. So you need to turn the second fraction upside down, and then you multiply the two fractions. And then with mixed numbers, you always need to turn those into fractions. And then there were unit fractions. So timesing by a unit fraction is the same as dividing by what's on the bottom of the fraction. And then with reciprocals, they're upside down versions of each other. And if you times them together, you always get an answer of 1. And that is a little bit of maths magic for you. So I suggest that you go and have a look at the exam question while all this is still fresh in your mind.